This is a beginner's tutorial on the musical alphabet and how it relates to our ukulele fretboard. This video will be part of an ongoing series of videos looking into understanding music and how it works, with the ukulele player in mind. I'll be starting off this video with the absolute basics and then we'll slowly be adding more information in small bite-sized videos that will hopefully help anyone new to music and music theory have a much better understanding of how music works on the ukulele and also any other instrument. All of these videos will eventually be available on a playlist on this channel called Understanding Music and How It Works. Before we get into this tutorial, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me making more of these video lessons moving forward. The main thing to know with the musical alphabet is that we only use the first seven letters of our standard Latin or Roman alphabet. So we just have the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Once we've got to G, the next letter would be an A again. Then B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Each letter represents a note or pitch, and these get higher in pitch the further we move through the alphabet. So these notes played on the ukulele would sound like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Once we've got to G, the next note would be another A, but this time it would be what is known as an octave higher than the first A we started on. So the A we started on, and the A we finished on, an octave higher. In simple terms, a string vibrates a certain amount of times a second to create a note. As we move up in pitch to the next note, the string vibrates slightly faster, and so on. An octave is where the string vibrates at exactly twice the speed of the original note, the note that is an octave below it. So these notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, are what are known as the natural notes. If we were to look at these notes on our ukulele fretboard using just the first string of our ukulele, the string nearest the floor, the A string, if we play the string open without fretting it, we have an A note. It's worth noting at this point that we have the same A note as this one available to us on all four strings of our ukulele, as per the diagram below. So the open string of the A string, the string nearest the floor, is the same note as if we were to fret the E string, the second string from the floor, at the fifth fret, or the C string, the third string from the floor, at the ninth fret, or the G string, the fourth string, or the string nearest our face, at the second fret. But to keep things simple, we're just going to use the first string for the rest of this exercise. So once again, if we play the open string without fretting it, we have an A note. If we then fret the A string at the 2nd fret and pluck the string, we have a B note. Hopefully you can hear that we've moved up in pitch. The new note, B, is higher in pitch than the A. You've probably also noticed that I didn't play the note at the 1st fret. Don't worry about that for now, I will explain that once we've looked at all of the natural notes first. If we then fret the same string again, this time at the 3rd fret, we have a C note. Again, hopefully you can hear we moved up in pitch. Next, if we move up the fretboard to fret the string at the fifth fret, we now have a D. It's possibly worth noting that many ukuleles will have dot markers in the center of the fretboard and sometimes on the top side of the neck as well at the fifth, seventh, tenth, and twelfth fret, which are just there to help you with referencing which fret you're at as you move further up the fretboard. Again, you've probably noticed we missed playing a note at the 4th fret here, and I'll get to that shortly. Then, if we move up to the 7th fret and pluck the string, we have an E. Move up again, this time to the 8th fret, and we have an F note. Move up two more frets to the 10th fret, and we have a G. And then finally, if we move up two more frets to the 12th fret, we have another A, an octave higher than the A we started with, the open string. So open, octave. Some ukuleles, mainly sopranos, might only have 12 frets, 
but many have a few more frets available to us. Basically everything starts again from the 12th fret, so the note at the 14th fret would be another B, an octave higher than the one at the 2nd fret, and the note at the 15th would be a C, an octave higher than the one at the 3rd fret, and so on. So if we just play these notes in sequence from the open string to the 12th fret, we would have A at the open string, B at the 2nd fret, C at the 3rd fret, D at the 5th fret, E at the 7th fret, F at the 8th fret, G at the 10th fret, and finally A, an octave of the A we started on at the 12th fret. You'll have spotted by now that I didn't play a note at the 1st, 4th, 6th, 9th and 11th fret of the A string. So there's sometimes an extra fret between the notes we played, and sometimes there isn't. Notice how there's no extra fret between B and C, the 2nd and 3rd fret, and again, no extra fret between E and F at the 7th and 8th fret. So if we now reference this with the layout of a piano keyboard, you'll notice that the labelled white keys are the notes we've just played on our ukulele, and between the notes, where we had an extra fret that we didn't play, you'll notice there's a black key. So between A and B, there's a black key. Between B and C, there isn't one. Between C and D, there is a black key. Between D and E, there's also a black key. Then there isn't one between E and F. Then there is one between F and G. And finally, there is one between G and the octave of A. From there on, the same sequence just repeats all the way up and down the keyboard, with the notes getting higher in pitch, moving to the right, or lower in pitch, moving back down the alphabet to the left. These black keys, or extra frets that we didn't play on the A string of our ukulele, can have two different names. They can either be referred to as a sharp or a flat of the notes either side of them. And what we choose to call them is dependent on several things, including the key that we're playing in. A sharp is normally represented by what looks like a hash symbol, and a flat is represented by what looks like a stylized lowercase b. At this point in time, it isn't really that important that you know which name to use for the note, but more that you accept that it could be one of two different names. So the black note between the A and the B on the piano keyboard, or the first fret of the A string on our ukulele, could be referred to as either an A sharp or a B flat. It's the same note that we hear, but has two possible names depending on context. A sharp or B flat. These are what are referred to as enharmonic equivalents. Basically, if you were to think of it being higher in pitch or sharper than A, it would be an A sharp. But if you were to think of it being lower in pitch or flatter than B, it would be a B flat. The same applies to the other four black keys or frets that we didn't play. So the note between C and D would be C sharp sharper than C, or D flat, flatter than D. The one between D and E would be D sharp or E flat. The one between F and G would be F sharp or G flat. And finally, the one between G and the next A would be G sharp or A flat. This format of the natural notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then A again, with the sharps or flats in between certain notes, as just discussed, is always the same in Western music, no matter what instrument we're playing. So if you can remember that there's no black key, or note on our ukulele, between B and C, and E and F, and there's always a sharp or flat between all of the other natural notes, it becomes much easier to work out where an individual note is on each string of our instrument. This skill will become very useful as you progress with your playing, and it will help making understanding and working out melodies and chords much easier. As I said earlier in the tutorial, the A note can be found on all four strings of our ukulele, as per the diagram. This is also the same for all the other notes of the musical alphabet, as shown here. You'll notice that the gaps, or intervals, between each note are the same between the notes A and B, B and C, and so on, moving up and down the fretboard on every string. They just start in a different place on each string. I've only shown the natural notes in this fretboard diagram, as there really isn't room to add all the sharps and flats in the space available, 
and it to be clearly visible on a smaller screen. But if you can remember that any of the empty frets shown can either be the sharp equivalent of the note below it in pitch, or be the flat of the note above it in pitch, this is a big step in learning the notes of the ukulele fretboard. Like I said before, don't worry too much about which name is the correct one to be using for now, and just use either for the time being, and I'll go into this in more detail in a future video. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel as I regularly post new tutorials for ukulele at all levels. Please give the video a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment if you've enjoyed it or you have any questions. There's also a PDF worksheet to accompany this tutorial, so if you'd like a copy, buy me a coffee, see how to do so in the description below, and I'll email one over to you. Thanks for watching and bye for now.